Hey folks, welcome back to Three Corners of Horror, and we have a very, very fun episode this week. And before I continue, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button below, continue supporting us. And number two is, if you haven't watched the film we're going to talk about, please uh, go back, watch it, because it's going to be filled with many, many spoilers. So let's get to it. Yo, Rick, what do you got for us, buddy? Hey, what's going on? Tonight, we're going to be reviewing Exist. A found footage horror film from 2014, directed by Eduardo Sanchez, who came to fame with the Blair Witch Project. It's about five teens that venture out to this cabin. And of course, as you may know, they hit something on the way over there, thinking it's an animal because they see a lot of hair and blood on, on the damage of the car. But, you know, what they assume is wrong because they're going to spend the weekend running away from Sasquatch. So hopefully, you know, you guys pick up on this movie after we re- have to re-review it because it's definitely worth the watch. Pretty original. Um, for being found footage, you don't see a lot of Sasquatch love out there in that genre, but I think it's really well made and I can't wait to talk about it. All right. Sounds good. Uh, I'm a little excited about this because once again, I'm a big, big fan of found footage. I think right now it's one of the best markets of the horror field right now. And, uh, well, Joe, what's your first impression of this, uh, this movie? Well, it was good to see a movie from the... I wouldn't even call them grandfathers of uh, found footage, which because they did the Blair Witch. I mean, there is other found footage before them. However, they did bring the found footage into the mainstream. So this was a really good movie. Um, it did keep you, you know, you're, you're waiting for the moments. It had good scare moments. And that's what you want from a found footage movie. Plus, beside the fact it made you feel like you were there. All right. For me, uh, I think one of the, things that actually going off the you know the moments was is you know a lot of the movies that have to do with creatures you see the creatures here and there but this one you see it in the beginning even there's those scenes where you'll see them pop up but the fact that it kept you kept you kind of involved because you heard it constantly throughout the the movie if you didn't see it you you heard it with the sounds it was making so um so rick as far as uh Why'd you pick it? But what 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 really stood out in this movie for you? For me, I I would definitely say what stood out was the Bigfoot character himself. By the time you get to the end of the film, he's a very sympathetic character. And the fact the way they shoot him as well during the movie is um as you would expect in all in found footage, you know, a lot of quick flashes here and there. They use lighting very well when like him coming out of the smoke or turning on the night vision to get a, a, a real good first look at the Sasquatch. And but by the time you get to the end of the movie, you understand his motives and just the makeup uh, as on the actual Bigfoot himself. They kind of subdued themselves. They didn't go over the top monster heavy. They made him really more human like with a lot of human attributes on there, not just makeup wise, but the way the actual monster was emoting himself and. I think you said it too, the sound of this movie, like when you don't yeah. see what's going on, but the way like just the, the Sasquatch, there's a point in the movie where he enters the cabin and just hearing the creaking of the wood panels below him and him breathing and snarling is just very creepy. I recommend watching this movie with headphones on as well so you get the, the best atmospheric uh, quality you can get. Hey, Joe, what's your take on the character of the Bigfoot? <clears throat> All right. So here's my thing with the whole movie. This movie actually brought me back to an old 70s creature feature. It actually reminded me of Orca. Because in Orca, the killer whale watched the mom as she died, kind of giving birth to her child. And if you didn't watch the movie, here's a spoiler part. So in this movie, it's the dad. Basically, the child got killed. And it's it's the parental part. It's the, it's the whole emotion of your child has been killed. So you're going to get vengeance for your child. You know, as a parent, I can relate to that. 
So that's where I, when I saw this movie after, like, I, I my third watch of this movie, you know, and I, I, if, I'm going to keep mentioning this a couple times as we're doing these. Watch your movies two or three times, you know, because you can't get a good feel of movie until you watch it a couple times. After the third watch, you understood the motivation behind the monster. This wasn't a creature feature in the sense of it was doing it be- just for the sense of doing it. It was the sense of a parent just dealing with the pain. That noise that you heard in the night was the cry of a parent who lost their child. Stop! Stop! Please! Stop! Please! I mean, one of the good things I to go off um, of the character itself is a lot of these creature features. The creature tends to be savage, does things on just pure ang- pure like savagery. You know, it, it attacks without thinking. This character was very methodical in what it was doing. Um, for example, one of the scenes was it goes into the to the cabin at nighttime while they're all huddled inside, and there's a scene where it, it gets quiet. Uh, Brian goes to the window with his camera, turns on the, the nightlight, it's right there. I mean, you would expect it to immediately start attacking. So what does it do? They'd be like, oh, we scared it away. No. It turns around, walks to their car, starts basically damaging it so they can't go anywhere. So it was a very interesting approach for a Sasquatch because you expected the the beast to be very just like pure rage and actually there was a thought process to what it was doing as well. Well, you're kind of dismissing it though, because they've been so first supposed to believe in Sasquatch. They've been watching us. So they know our reactions to what we're going to do. So if they put us in a situation where we're going to be scared, we're going to want to get out of there. What's the first thing we're going to run for our car. So it took out our means of transportation to get out of there. So it was smart enough. Because it has watched its, it you know this movie caught a glimpse of it, but it, he could have he could have been watching us for a while and got to know what we do in situations. But going with my point though, how many movies did you see as Sasquatch actually do that, or a creature actually do that? Not actually, they because they, so they, that's, they, that's they, they kind of, they, well they 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 minimize it to a monster. Whereas, you know, it's basically the, a primi- primitive version of us. What do you think, Rick? That's the brilliance of this movie, in my opinion. The fact that he's not just your monster that you ran into his territory and started having sex and doing drugs and he just kills everybody. He has a motive. He has a reason for what he's doing. And like you said, he's methodical. And at the same time, I think it's done to kind of give a little bit of a homage to Evil Dead, which I got a lot of those vibes. Going back and destroying the car... Even the fact how they even got veered off the road, they, he knocked down the trees so they wouldn't have a path to go through anymore. So they had to stop where they were going, hunker down. Um, as well as they, there's even a basement with a trap door in there, you know. And um, I think the creature is definitely not just there to, to just murder everybody. He's trying to prove a point. Even at the very end, when we get to the end of the film... Just to look on his face, he looks tired, scared, hurt. You can see the pain in him. And the fact that he decided to leave the last character um, alive, um, Brian, he he's trying to give him, you know what? You took my family, I'm going to take yours. He killed his brother, he killed his friends, and he's, you know what? This is over. Live with it, I'm going to live with it. We're going to part ways right now. So let's mention, I'm going to bring this to Joe real quick. Let's talk about this character, Brian. And... How unlikely of a character he is. Go ahead, Joe. All right. So the one thing I will give this movie is that any horror movie fan knows you have a final girl. It is always the woman who survives whatever it is. Supernatural, beast, human. In this movie, you had a final man. And not just that. One that begged on the humanity of the monster itself to let him survive. So it showed man 
as not just the, the final man, but not just that, not even as the aggressor, as the one kind of begging for the humanity of something else. He knew he made a mistake. And instead of getting all, you know, macho and rage, admitted to the mistake and begged on the forgiveness of essentially a monster. So this was one of the first movies I saw where you got the final guy and showing man actually having an emotional part and uh, like reaching out to the emotional part in the monster in order to survive it. Well, the funny thing about the character Brian is in the movie, he's portrayed as the least liked character. He does certain things. For example, when he was taping the couple basically about to get it on and Sasquatch uh, interrupted, but his character was based of in the usual cliche of all horror movies. That's the character usually is first to go. And throughout the whole, his scenes, he's actually the one seeking out Sasquatch. And then there's one telling scene that he has a line, but basically he starts going into the woods. He starts looking for it. And then actually starts almost like inviting a conversation with the, with the Sasquatch. And then when he finally sees it, he does the same thing. He begs for it to not be aggressive. But he has a line that says, it's your home. You know where I'll be. That was almost like a foreshadowing, like almost inviting him. All right, you know where I'm going to be. So if you have to handle any business, you know where we're going to be at. I mean, what do you think of that, Rick? I think the character of Brian is exactly like you said. I think he's meant to be like that klutz, the one that nobody likes. But yet he's the only one out of the five that knows about the Sasquatch because of his uncle. And he's trying to, you know, he has other gains in mind. Like when he first, he's the first one to see him. First one to see like the actual, uh, the footprints on the, on the floor there. And him being the last one is definitely done on purpose to kind of flip the whole, you know, cliche on his head. And the fact that he was begging for, he begged for his life, but at the same time, at the end, he gave up. He said, you know what? He put down the gun, just end this, you know, end it. And I think that's when the monster saw it in his eyes that he was really, humanity. he saw the humanity. He saw that, you know what? Okay, the I, we're on the same page now, this is over. All right, so we talked about certain things we liked. What about certain things that basically, you know, kind of pushed the film a little bit different direction for you? Joe, you go first. Actually, as a whole, I, I, I did like the movie. Now, um, for me, I treat this as a sophomore movie to the Blair Witch people. So my only true critique of the movie in the, is the scene where, they're, where Matt, they're calling out for Matt as he's screaming in the night or in the woods which kind of reminded me of the Blair Witch Project. So it felt as in they threw in something that was familiar to them that wasn't necessarily needed. That is my actually only, as I was watching the movie and that scene happened, I sat there and I'm like, oh man, like it's the Blair Witch people. This reminds me of the Blair Witch. And I didn't want that for the movie because it was two separate things. They were doing a good job up until that point. You can get past that as a you know horror movie fan. You can get past that. The movie is good as a whole. Like I said, that's the only part for me in the movie that it just took me out of it because it just reminded me that it's the Blair Witch people that are doing the movie, and this reminds me of the Blair Witch. Yeah, you're absolutely you're absolutely right because even the the monster's lair where uh, he had Matt down there, uh, his lair was. It was identified by an upside down tree. Like, I get it. They're going what they're going for aesthetically. But let's say if you're a hiker and you run into this upside down tree. That, hey, come on. It's like, you're going to see that. And you're going to, what What the hell is this? That's well, it's time for you to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, it's time for you not to go continue for, this walk. You know, you know, you've seen enough movies to know that <laughs> if a tree is upside down, you got to pack things up. It's time to go. 
for a monster who doesn't want to be seen, that's like the most like you know worst way you can just you know mark your territory. For me, what this parent, but but I slipped the word. But for me, what this movie hit on was a parent, a parent who lost their child and was just ultimately looking to just put on others the pain that they were feeling because their child was dead. Which is why I'm saying it reminded me of Orca. Because in Orca, the whole premise was the fact that Orca exacted revenge just based on the pain that he felt. Same thing in Exist. It was the pain that the child was dead. It understood at the end. It wasn't malicious. It, you know, they didn't mean to do it on purpose. You know, and he let him live for that reason. So that's where I see this movie. It, it, it's kind of like, just imagine being a parent and losing your child, what you're going to do. And that's exactly what the monster did and exists. Well, a lot of things too that I like about this. I mean, if, there, if there's something I would say I have a knock on it, I, I don't know why. I just feel like I, one thing I wanted more. I just, dude, I wanted so much more, but I understand how they kept it simple. But going to back to his reactions towards some of these characters, I mean, take, for example, Todd. Todd was the one that shot the gun at him, injured him, and Todd was the one that he killed instantly. Now, you flip it, which was one of the coolest scenes of the movie, was when Matt's on the bike and is chasing him the whole time. And you had that scene where he's constantly he's on the phone asking for help. You have the, um, the shot of him basically constantly looking back. The minute he attacks him, he doesn't kill him instantly. He makes him suffer. He breaks his legs or he can't go anywhere then he brings him to the den. But there's also another thing that I like about this movie that I don't know if you guys picked up on. And the way the movie began itself, um, the, the shots were very slow, very slow, slow mo. The music was very somber. So when I'm when I started watching it from the get go from the second time, I was like, hold up. It almost feels like I'm watching a in memory of type movie. Tragedy. Yeah, because you already had the foreshadowing already taking place with the music, the slow motion camera effects. And it was kind of funny because a lot of the images, Brian was the least character they showed in these images. It was always the two couples, which I, I think that's, I mean, if you go back and watch it again, you'll see what I'm saying. But it was just like, I think this movie did what it needed to do without going too over the top. Uncle Bob, it's not worth the cabin. Come on. I think this film here should be viewed by more people. Even if you're not a fan of found footage, I would still recommend this film to anybody because it does has that element of story, which is different. It's not a monster killing for the sake of killing. It's there's a purpose behind it. And in my opinion, if there is a Sasquatch out there, it's going to be portrayed just like this creature was. It's got human elements. It's got feelings. It shows empathy when it wants to. And, it, you know, and I, like you said, as a parent, you lose a child. That's exactly how you're gonna. That's how you're gonna respond. Human or monster. Right. Yep. Human or monster doesn't matter who you are. Someone takes your child away from you. It does things to you. I would definitely recommend this to anybody. Joe. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I love found footage movies. I mean, again, we're getting the sophomore feature from the grandparents. You know, with Blair Bridge Project. So no, it's a great movie. Don't mind my little knockoff. Like I said, that's, you know, one of those critiques you have as a horror movie fan as a whole, and especially as a parent, you can understand the creature's perspective as to the actions that he takes in this movie. Now, unlike uh, other films, I, I feel like, uh, I think we hit all the good points about this film. Um, like I would definitely recommend it. Like the first time Rick told me about it, the first uh, Sasquatch feature I seen was uh, Willow Creek. Uh, which is another good, you know, Sasquatch, you know, movie, which is different from this one because this one shows a more like you guys are, you know, harping on the the humanity side of this Sasquatch, not compared to you know other movies where you, you just see the brutality of it for no reason most of the time, just for they deem it because it's territorial. This one wasn't very territorial. This one was basically, you know, seeking to, like you said, Joe, 
cause suffering to people who cause suffering towards him by taking away his child. Um, but overall, I, I think it was a good film. I definitely would recommend you know people to watch it. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, your final uh, thoughts of the of the movie and how would you rate it? Uh, well, let's start with Joe. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit off our thing. I'm gonna go ahead and give it say five is the thing. I'm gonna give it at least a three point five to a four, but definitely a three point five. All right. Rick, I'm gonna go and give it a four. I think the movie to me hits hits every checkbox I'm looking for. It has a lot of the typical found footage tropes. You know, you're never gonna get away from that in these type of films. Unfortunately, like why is Matt? getting on a bicycle with two GoPros, for example. It just makes no sense. But, you know, if you could just not get too taken out of the story because of that, I think you're in for a good time. Four to five. All right. For me, uh, going back on the Matt thing, the one thing he did, it was, it just killed me. Is the minute he gets reception, he gets off the bike, which I didn't understand that. You figure you just keep going as much as you can. But that's basically the element. Let's make him stop and let's make him see this, the Sasquatch and, which I, I, I go back, it just led to one of the best scenes in the whole movie where he's getting chased. Uh, for me, I'm a massive found footage buff. Majority of the movies I watch are found footage. Um, this one I kind of like because it wasn't over the top. It didn't try to push its boundaries. It basically stayed on the level, level playing field. Um, there's just a constant presence of the beast, whether it's on camera or the sound of it on camera was I think one of the best things they could have did to the movie. Um, Cause a lot of creature features, it just appears and disappears for a while. And then it comes back when you least suspect that this one presence was always felt. So I'm going to go with a, a four out of five. I mean, I just think this is a movie I would recommend and uh, hopefully you guys, you know, get to watch it and let us know what you think about it. You know, leave comments below. Um, off of that, uh, Joe, why don't you let us know what, what's the next film we're going to be talking about? All right, so the next one we're going to review is St. Maud. I mean, it's go ahead and check it out. It's going either you're going to look at the movie and the psychological or your uh, religious beliefs. Either way, we're going to come back and we're going to discuss St. Maud. All right, for uh, myself, Rick, and Joe, Three Corners of Horror, please join us next week for uh, St. Maud. Everybody have a good one. Stay safe. Peace. 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 <laughs>